Hello everyone and welcome to episode 41 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. In this series I play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games with the intention of getting to 2000 ELO and also to try and educate you guys who are watching by talking you through my thought process and then using the post game analysis to utilize the computer engine to help flesh out some of the ideas and see where I went right where I went wrong and also play through some of the variations out on the board rather than just saying a bunch of notations and drawing a bunch of arrows. It's easier for you guys to follow along and try and gain some of the ideas, gain, learn some of the ideas a bit more easily so you can implement them in your own games. This is all about trying to get you guys to improve. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the first game. Okay, well, I have no idea why I said first game because this should only be one game anyway, uh, unless like as last episode where we had two rather short games, so I did two in one. By the way, you can check out the previous episodes in the playlist below. We are facing a much lower rated player, 1671, who plays d4. I'm going to play c6, and we're going to invite him to play e4 and go into a Karo, or go c4 and go into a Slav defense. I want to say that's the Syrian flag, by the way. I really hope I get that correct. It is Syria. Okay, cool. That would have been a bit embarrassing. Uh, I tried to be good with my flag knowledge. Uh, any of you who used to play FIFA back in the day will know all about that. Um, I'm also a massive history nerd, hence the uh, channel name. Anyway, anyway, back to chess, back to chess. I'm going off on a tangent. Knight f3. We're going to go knight f6. Keep it nice and simple. Taking is always a move, but I don't really like taking because... Then white can take a massive center, and I don't really know the theory in all honesty. So let's not go into that. Bishop f5 is 100% a move here, but bishop f5 can sometimes get a little bit punished by moves like queen b6, trying to take advantage of the fact that the bishop stepped off of the b7 square. And it can get kind of cramped sometimes with moves like queen b6, c5, takes takes. I'm not a fan. So I'm tempted to play this in more of a semi-slav structure, which is what we're going to do with e6. Now, one of the points of the slav is that you don't play e6 and you instead play c6, so you can get your bishop out and then play e6. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to. You can do it in this manner where you do block your bishop in, but in the future, you may try and play e5 to break out, or go b6, bishop b7 to develop your bishop. Or your bishop might just remain a bit of a passive piece, which isn't the end of the world. Anyway, bishop g5, pins the knight to the queen, obviously. Bishop e7 looks pretty logical. I don't see a reason not to play it. Um, this is an incredibly solid opening the semi-slav, even though it might not be, like, objectively amazing, I feel like it's so easy to play. So I'm a fan of it. Okay, so... Knight bd7 looks good here. Queen a5 also looks good. Looking at moves like knight e4, but then he can always take the bishop, and then our king will have to take. And I'd rather not do that. It's easy for him to play moves like rook c1, queen b3, queen c2, queen d2 to break the pin, and or just you know defend the knight. So I don't think queen a5 is very effective. Castling looks fine. I'm going to castle, and we've apparently transposed to a queen's gambit declined. This is what chess does. Chess positions transpose a lot of the time. I'm sure knight e4 might be a move here. Am I confident in that though? Not sure. Not sure. Knight bd7 looks like a very easy move to play. Just, you know, developing. h6 could be a move. Bishop h4. We might be inviting with h6, bishop f4, though. And that looks like a more useful diagonal for the bishop to be on anyway. So I don't think I want to encourage him to improve his bishop. 
Okay, bishop d3. So a lot of the time, the idea now is to take on c4 because the bishop has now moved. You're going to make it move again instead of taking while the bishop was on f1, meaning it could do it in one move. So here the argument is that if you take and then bishop takes, white has wasted a move with bishop d3. And we can expand with moves like b5, b5 maybe b4, bishop b7, maybe a6, maybe c5. I think that looks good. Let's take. I'm sure this is the principled way to play this opening. I f Do I need to play h6? I don't think so. I was a little bit worried about h7, but I can throw h6 in whenever I want. And it's well defended for now anyway. Knight b6 may be tempting to some of you, but it doesn't really help the position, I don't think. B5 looks a little flimsy, for sure. But I'm pretty sure that's the right idea. To play B5 with tempo. We can consider this move. You can just play a move like Knight E2. And this pawn is a bit overextended. So A6 looks fine. Bishop B7 looks fine. Bishop B7, A4, A6 looks good. <clears throat> and this could be a very promising diagonal for the bishop. So it if we can play c5, meaning that we could turn our bishop from one of our worst pieces into one of our best pieces. This is how chess works. When lines open up, different pieces get different prospects. So I want to do like bishop b7, a6, c5. That will be the ideal setup. If bishop b7 is e4 a concern, I don't think so. A6, this is never a problem because our knight can just jump in here. If bishop b7, e4, a6, obviously we're looking at c5, right? This will never work. So, yeah, we, we can play h6 whenever we want. Queen c2, I think we should play h6. I mean, he's not really threatening to do this because our knight will control that square. But then maybe we're going to be giving up e5, and I don't really want to do that. So let's just play safe, kick the bishop. I feel like bishop f4 was a bit better because, again, it looks like a more active diagonal control over e5. But okay, now bishop h7 is not a concern because the king can just move to h8, and his bishop's a bit stupid looking. So yeah, a6 looks logical. Again, this looks like an overextension. Maybe the knight can hop in like this. So we're going to go with a6. a4 is not really a concern to me. c5 looks good. We might even be threatening to ruin the structure on the king side. Do we play a preparation move with like queen b6 or rook c8? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think this is a problem. If he tries to put like a rook on d1, well, we could always go c4 for a start. If like c5 takes takes, we're attacking the bishop anyway. If here uh, he can't push, because we have too many defenders. So yeah, let's go for it. c5 on the board. This looks very nice to me. This bishop, like I said, is now one of our best pieces. Um, the knights support each other. The bishop supports the knight. Everything supporting c5. The rook can come to c8. Queen can come to like b6. This rook can come to d8. Looks like a very ideal setup. Our opponent's playing very quickly though. He has more time than he started with. Which I would criticize, but it looks like he's playing pretty good moves. Although obviously... We'll see whether that is the case in the post-game analysis. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Knight e5. So we could take and double his pawns. 
Then we'd have to move the knight. If we trade bishops, I don't care. Is f4, f5 scary? I don't think so. Because then he's going to be left with doubled isolated pawns. Takes, takes. Knight d5. We're kind of threatening knight b4. Takes, takes. Sorry. Knight e5, d e5, knight d5, takes, takes. He could trade a bunch of stuff. But if we take with the pawn, this looks good. We can try and create a passed pawn as well. f4 control defends the 5 pawn. Um, hmm, do I want to trade everything though? Takes, takes. We could go knight d7, but it looks a bit flimsy. We could consider c4 first. But if then takes and takes, he can play knight f6 with check. So, yeah, no, that doesn't really work. Let's take the knight. Let's double his pawns. We now have a queenside majority. So this could be useful later on in the game. Knight, knight d7 attacks this pawn. But then he could get knight e4 in any way. So... Yeah, we might actually just want to trade that knight off because it could become a problem. If he takes, obviously we don't have to take with the pawn. We could take with the queen. Because he can't take the bishop because of mate. So knight takes, queen takes, he'd have to go e4. And then we can just drop the queen back. And then if we trade bishops, we could argue the e4 pawn is a weakness. Although it does support f4, f5 a bit better, because then if takes, then he can take with the pawn. We could take here with the knight, but then I'm, I'm worried about knight here. If we take with the queen and then knight here, knight b3, the queen goes here, then we fork. If the queen goes to the d file, we play rook to d8. The, the queen b1 might be the only move. Knight d6 is a scary looking prospect. But we could always take. And then take, and then take, and then take. And we're into a major piece sort of end game. But we have a majority on the queen side. I feel like we might be able to grind him down in that. Okay. Okay. Let's see what he goes for. This is a pretty equal looking position. I think black has a slight advantage because of our queenside majority, which could create a passed pawn in the future. So I don't mind the position at all. I'm not thrilled to be trading off a ton of pieces because obviously my opponent is lower rated and I should be winning this game ideally but at the same time I think we've gone about this in the correct way I don't want to just um, not trade pieces for the sake of keeping pieces on the board if it gives me a far worse position you know there's no point doing that so okay Queen e7. This looks, it just looks like a s solid position. If my opponent plays a move like a3, I literally just predicted that. <laughs> Stopping knight to b4. This is a move, so we might just want to take this to stop that from happening. Could we consider this, actually? Pressuring e5, pressuring e3, and we're also lining this up. Well, if queen g5, f4, some of you might be saying knight f4, but the queen defends g2. So that doesn't work. If queen g4, f4, knight e3, takes, 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 we end up down a piece. 
Queen g5, f4, we could go queen g3, looking at the e3 square. But then he has moves like rook f3. Hmm. There, there. There, there. Hmm. I feel like we should have more, but we just don't. C4 looks kind of tempting, though. I'll tell you why. Because if the bishop goes back to E2, then this idea might be better. Because if F4, then we can take because the queen's blocked off from defending g2. And if we go c4, bishop e2, queen g5, bishop f3, then e5 is hanging. If c4, bishop e4, maybe he's good. We could take, 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 and then play like queen e4. Yeah, but then queen d4. So we could do c4, bishop e4, take, 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 rook d8, rook d1, then queen d4. Because then queen d4, no sorry, queen e4, because then queen d4 isn't playable. c4, we do have to be a little bit concerned about bishop h7, king h8. Maybe? Then? Well, the knight can't go to e4, actually. Because uh, then we take the bishop and the knight has no use for discoveries. Actually, no, that's a lie. Knight to f6, and that would be mate. So it's a double check. And g6, he can probably sack the bishop. I do like it, though. I think we have good prospects. And I am kind of expecting bishop e2. I know I've taken a long time with that calculation. But the thing is, you know, while my time management hasn't been perfect in this speed run, it's not a speed run, it's a rating climb, by any means, um... Yeah, my time management hasn't been amazing, but if both sets of minor pieces get traded off, this is going to become a far simpler pos simpler position. And he does go bishop e2. Queen g5 looks like a problem. Because we're hitting both of these. If queen g5 takes, takes... Again, we are threatening mate and the e5 pawn. He could go e4... Blocking mate and attacking the bishop. If the bishop retreats, f4 defends the pawn and attacks the queen. Is that scary? I don't know. Can we take, take queen g5? I know e5 is defended, but it's actually difficult to stop mate, because e4 is now no longer playable. Bishop f3 is not playable either. f3 is playable, but it's ugly. g3 is playable, but it's ugly. Let's do it. He could take with the pawn, of course. But then he has so many weaknesses. And then this is just a simple double attack. Let's go. Queen g5. Threatening mate. And e4 is now no longer a move because we take it. And he's going to let us mate him in one. And he resigns. This is why you don't play so quickly. 
no need to play that quickly. He spent six seconds on that move. Like, you've got 14 minutes. I normally try not to be too harsh with my opponents because there's no need. Um, like, you know, I, I know he's lower rated than me. I don't expect him to play perfectly. I don't play perfectly, but come on. Six seconds. Are you not at least concerned about what Queen G5 is looking at? It, it's a pretty aggressive looking move, right? I mean, this position, uh, the computer gives me 0.7. Let me just switch the view a second. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Okay, let me just switch to the analysis board and uh, we'll go over the game in a bit more detail. All right, real real quick, before we get into the analysis, um, I kind of forgot to do a pose in the last video. Quite a few of you guys in the comments want me to hit a pose um, in the videos. <laughs> so we could do it between the games if you want. Today's pose can be a lat spread. Okay, I hope that makes you all happy. Anyway, 80.7% accuracy for my opponent, 92.5 for us. That's not bad for a semi-slav. I think we only made one real mistake all game. So it'll be interesting to see what that was. We were definitely gaining uh, some small advantages as the game went on, which once we started to get this b5, a6, c5, bishop, b7 setup going, I felt like it was definitely turning in our favour. But let's get into it. d4, c6. The reason I play c6 rather than d5 first is, one, I want to try and get my opponent to play e4 so that we can get a normal Karo Khan, because I love that opening. And secondly, I feel like after c6, a lot of opponents, if they play some kind of Catalan structure, or maybe a London normally, which I might want to avoid, then c6 might make them think that I'm going for a perk defense with these kinds of moves. So they might try and take more space in the center than they normally would with moves like c4. It's, it's just a little bit of mind games, to be honest. A little bit of a mix-up of a mood, move order. And like I say, offering a Karo Khan, because I know a lot in that opening. And I've started organizing on my channel um, different videos of mine featuring different openings into different playlists. So I've got like Sicilian, French, uh, Vienna, Karo, Slav. I think those are all the ones that I tend to play. So, you know, if you want to learn more ideas in the Slav, then uh, you can check out some of the other videos. But this one was a semi-Slav. We have knight f3, knight f6, knight c3. Just developing. You know, like I said during the game, the computer always likes taking on c4 in a lot of these lines. I don't know enough theory to be brave enough to go for something like this. Maybe it's something that I should look into. But it's kind of not really my style. I don't like just hanging on to pawns um, and just having loads of positional weaknesses. I, I, I just don't like playing like that. I want to be the one sacrificing a pawn for aggressive play. But if, it, if I can compromise and go, okay, I'm the black pieces, I'll take a slightly worse position, maintain the equal material, and I plan to break out in the future, that's exactly what happened in this game, right? So that's what I prefer to do. Of course, play to whatever you prefer in your playstyle. Like, play openings that reflect your playstyle. e6. You know, yes, it blocks the bishop in. And maybe you can play bishop f5 in this position. But the computer doesn't like my position as much after takes, takes, and what? Queen b3? Yeah, queen b3. Like I mentioned during the game, this b7 pawn can get very weak. And if I go for a move like queen b6, these are some ugly looking pawns. Yeah, I get an open file for my rook, but I don't really have much pressure going on. The e5 square could be a problem. This diagonal could be a problem because I've moved my bishop out. I might just end up having to retreat it anyway. I'm not the biggest fan. So I go e6. <clears throat> we have bishop g5. Again, computer likes taking, but I wanted to go bishop e7. Just a really, really solid, like, 
this is an incredibly strong pawn structure. Basically impossible for white to fully break through with his current resources. We have no worries on the king side. And, you know, white's development is easy. You can argue it's easier than mine because he gets his bishop out of the pawn chain before playing e3. But like I said, either we go for e5 and break out that way in the future, or we go for moves like b6 and bishop b7, or like what happened in the game, we take at an opportune moment and then start pushing on the queen side, open our bishop up and go for c5, which I thought was a very solid plan. h3, kind of an odd move. h6 is definitely an idea here, but like I said, I thought I could just play it at any time. b6 here is also a move the computer likes just to develop the bishop, say bishop to d3. Here I don't think this is as good because you've wasted a move with b6 already. So here it's probably better to play like bishop b7 and develop in this manner and maybe go for c5 after the knight develops. I have played the this position in this way before, but I thought knight bd7 no risk, right? I'm not committing anything. The knight's going there regardless. Bishop d3. And yeah, now it's basically equal after I play d takes c4. Bishop takes c4. b5. We push. Bishop d3. And like I said, b4 I don't think is good. I mean, it's a fine position, but it's just a bit of an overextension. Knight a4. Well, I was actually thinking knight e2 to be honest. Apparently this is good after c5, which is interesting. So if knight a4, I guess the knight controls the c5 square then. So if I go c5 now, can he just do a bunch of trades here? Take, take, take. Taking here isn't good. Because why? Ah, this is just a fork. So I'm supposed to play bishop b7 and just win this pawn back at a later date. That's difficult to do. That's difficult to do. Uh, so anyway, the computer says this is basically equal, but I think this is a bit trickier to play. So I thought bishop b7 was the best idea. It is the best move. Queen c2 is a mistake. Um, is it not just better to castle? Yeah. Or rook c1. Or taking. A3 is also fine. Which he played later on anyway. To stop this whole idea. Wait, so, sorry, this whole idea. Um, but okay, Queen C2. It's not obvious why this is a mistake. But the computer really likes Rook C8 and C5. I thought I'd play H6 first. This is only good for white if he takes. Uh, but he didn't take. It's a difficult thing to do, to just give the bishop up like that. I was expecting bishop f4, like I said. And then I was going to go for this whole plan. Bishop h4 is about as just about as good, though. Rook c8 again is a good move. I chose a6, castle, and c5. So we're definitely starting to build up a bit of an advantage, but... We're not quite there yet, right? A 0 0.4, 0 0.5 advantage isn't enough to claim that a position is winning. You know, you want to be getting more to plus one or so. Knight e5, I thought was a bit of an odd move, but okay. We take. Rook c8 was a move here. But rook c8 is always a move, I guess. c4 is also a move. Why did I reject that? I rejected that because of this. And I can't really take here because of knight f6, bishop f6, bishop f6, queen f6, and queen d3. But apparently you can do it in this way. But even then, I'm just losing the c2 pawn, and I'm going to be down a pawn. And then I have to find e5. And if you take then, what, rook d2, and this pawn survives... It's difficult to see that far in the future, though. Anyway, that's why I rejected c4. I took on e5 instead. d takes e5, and I went knight d5. Knight d7 was also playable, like I said, but it just felt a little bit flimsy. Um, bishop e7 is good. 
Knight d5. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether I was going to take with the pawn or the bishop. Bishop takes is a bit better. You can also take this bishop as well. But I wasn't sold on this idea. Again, the knight looks a little scary coming in like this. Or maybe it can just drop back to e2 and come into like f4. The knight looks decent. The bishop's probably going to trade itself off like this. And it's an interesting imbalance. I guess you can argue white has a lot of dark square weaknesses. So a dark squared bishop versus a knight in like an end game should be fine for black. But the position's also somewhat closed. Somewhat. So anyway, bishop e7, queen e7, and a3. I'm not sure about the move a3. Knight d5 is definitely something that white can go for here. And ed5 was my intention to open this up and increase my majority. It's difficult, because if you go f4 trying to defend... Ah, there is the move f6. I didn't see this during calculation, but had I got to this position, I'm confident I would have found f6. Simply, you can't take because of queen e3. King moves, and then you take on f6. You're up a clean pawn. This is a weak pawn. You have a passed, protected d-pawn. Uh, this is pretty winning, in my opinion. White's going to have to be insanely accurate to hold this. So, okay, that's one option. Knight e4 was another option. c4 was the best move. Bishop e2. Ah, then knight b4. Double attack. Queen b1. Maintaining the defense. Rook a d8. Black has way too much activity. So, okay, that makes a lot of sense. a3. Nah. Like I said, this is what happens if he takes. This is what happens if he goes knight to e4. Bishop h7 is a move. And I was looking at those kinds of lines. Because it looks a bit silly. But I also can't really play a move. Let's say... Um... Oh, he just wants to drop back to e4 actually. But just for the sake of argument. Um, g6 is difficult to play. Because this could be a problem in the future. Apparently not, but it looks a little bit scary, right? Anyway, yeah, it just wants to go bishop h7 and bishop back to e4. I guess you're trying to facilitate a bunch of trades. a3 makes a lot of sense because it stops knight to b4. Um, we go c4. Rook a d8 was also good. c4 is fine though. Uh, knight c3 was a move. But after queen c3, queen g5, why didn't, wait, why didn't I want to do this? Oh, then he had e4. I wasn't sold. Yeah, like the best move is f5. That's tough to play. After that, rook fd8. Bishop can drop back. I have a slight advantage, but. White's got everything under control. C5 is weak as well. So I'm going to have to go like C4. And I mean this is a good position. But I don't know how I prove an advantage here. So we go C4 immediately. And the bishop goes to E2. And like I said I thought that was a bad move. I was expecting bishop E4 or bishop 2 H7. Again bishop H7. King H8. Something like this. I guess this is good for me. But, so after king h8, I assume you just come back to e4. So yeah, the whole idea is to come back to e4 regardless. So whether you go there in immediately or you give the check first, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just depends which square you'd like the king on as the white pieces. And okay, I have a small advantage. I could just trade off like this if I wanted to. And I was calculating this line, and I didn't like this, although apparently this is good. Rook f, no not like that, rook fd8, rook fd1, maybe I can just go like this, and bring my king in, push some pawns maybe. I guess this is a weakness, and I've still got my queenside majority. I can do stuff like this if I want to. 
But my plan was to, in this position, play rook fd8 first, and then if rook ad1 or something, then go queen e4. So this is no longer playable because my rook controls that square. And obviously, if he trades first, it still isn't playable. So I just felt I had a lot of uh, control over his position. And if he plays a move like f3, while it's apparently the best move, it's also kind of weakening. e3 is now weak. e5 is still weak. He comes back to a square like c6, probably going to come into c5. And I feel like I could put a lot of pressure on here, especially with my queenside majority, right? Because it's far easier to push this majority than it is for white to try and push his majority. So, bishop e2, mistake. And yeah, knight c3 is a miss. So this was our only bad move of the game, basically. And queen g5 immediately was better. Now, I rejected this because of knight d5, bishop d5, e4. Bishop c6, f4. I didn't like this. If queen g3, can he not just play rook f3? Queen g6, we attack here. Rook e3. Wait, actually... Yeah, no, he can just defend with a move like bishop f3, though. I don't... Okay, yeah, then we can get into e3, but say he just goes like, I don't know, queen c1. Apparently, this is plus 1.7. I mean, I get it. We've got a lot of pressure on the position, but I don't see how we actually convert it, which is why I rejected this. I guess we can play moves like rook d3, rook a d8. This isn't the only variation we could have gone into, but this is the type of position we were, we were going to get. This is the pawn structure I was expecting to face. And I thought, you know, we've got pressure, but not enough. Which is why I took on c3. Because my point was, if you take with the b-pawn, queen g5, this is a simple fork. Something like f3. Here I can take on e3 even. So g4 is apparently better. Queen e5, this is still weak. This diagonal is still weak. These pawns are weak. If the pawn goes to g3, then same thing. The pawns are still weak. And I, I'm sure I can easily convert this. Not only am I up a pawn, but my bishop's amazing. My queen's amazing. This pawn structure's horrific. This is should be a good conversion. So after queen c3, my point was queen g5. And my idea was that you have to go f3 or g3. G4 is also playable, but it's not quite as good. And okay, I've got, what, 0.6 in my favour. Rook, bring a rook to d8 or a rook to c8. I can start expanding on the queen side at some point. I can go into g3 if I want to put more pressure on. It's not game over by any means. Um, but I thought I definitely have the advantage here. And yeah, it's interesting that it's different um, after this because e5 is under attack rather than being defended and e4 just isn't good enough. Because it's create like this expansion is creating more weaknesses than it is strengths for the white position. Okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. But anyway... No, not this line. This is the line we chose. And he just blundered mating one. And it's kind of frustrating because, like, I would have liked to have played out this kind of position and tried to show the weakness of the white position and try and uh, capitalize on my queen side majority. But, you know, he blunders mating one. I have to, I have to play mating one. I'm pretty sure he resigned after a KD1 anyway, so I couldn't even give him like a mercy or anything. But, you know, that's chess at the end of the day. And we won, so no complaints. We are only 14 ELO off of 2000 now. 
So it's looking good. It's looking good for the rating climb. I am well and truly on the redemption arc. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. You'll support the channel and you can also get my videos uh, in your feed more often so you can continue to improve your chess because that's the goal. I'm trying to teach you guys how I play chess in the hopes that it can improve your chess skills. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.